In a game full of well-written characters, the mysterious Clausia might be Disco Elysium's best. Honestly, she might be one of the most effectively written characters in all of video games. Unpredictable, hard to read, and with an arc that ends in earnest before the climax, Clausia is one of those characters who will stick with you long after you're done playing the game. Through Clausia, the developers accomplish one of the narrative keys of any good mystery, consistently turning the story on its head and subverting player expectations, all while giving us plenty to debate and discuss in the years to come. But before I go on, if you are a Disco Elysium fan, then please be sure to like, subscribe, and consider supporting me with the YouTube channel membership or over on Patreon. My dream is to make these videos full-time someday, and by doing any of those things, you'll be helping make that dream a reality. Harry meets Clausia shortly after waking up in his room at the Whirling and Rags. She's the first character he can actually talk to, which surely makes her stand out to the player. During this opening conversation, she provides a base level of information that helps the Disco Cop work through some of the initial questions about his next level blackout. It's Clausia that informs him that he's a police officer, and that he's been partying way too hard. The latter is no surprise, but the former? Man, I don't think I'll ever get over my initial discovery that the dude who couldn't face his own reflection in the mirror was a lawman. I laughed so hard, and even now, the thought of Clausia reminding Harry that he's a cop and not some aged frat boy or a rock star brings a smile to my face. It's here that Disco Elysium introduces players to an important reality of its game mechanics. Even when you succeed on a roll, you don't necessarily win anything. The player can flirt with Clausia and pull it off with a combination of a good roll and a decent starting score in Psyche, but it doesn't mean Harry is about to get a morning delight. It just means you're not going to ask her to, quote, have fuck with you, which, let's be honest, is the funnier outcome anyway. So not only should the player not be prepared for an epic success when they do nail a roll, but they should also be comfortable with failure as well. Because generally, it won't set you back that much, and it's likely to lead to something pretty hilarious too. From there, depending on how much of a taskmaster you are, it might be a while before you encounter Clausia again. The next time you hear about her, it's from Titus, who claims she was raped by Lely, the hanged man, and that the lynching was done in response to this vile act. At first, Titus tries to keep Clausia's identity a secret, in an attempt to keep her away from Harry's questioning. But Mr. Dubois is a human can opener, and he finds his way to her rooftop eventually. Harry then spends some time bouncing between Clausia and Titus, as he tries his best to figure out what happened on the night of the hanging. There's at least three separate conversations with Clausia that take place during this section of the game, but it's in the first that she turns the investigation on its head. She insists that she wasn't raped by Lely, says that they had a consensual relationship, and informs the detectives that it was her who nicked the phone line at the Whirling and Rags and called the police. Harry will then follow up with Titus, at which point he'll get a recording of Lely, which Titus claims confirms the hanged man's guilt. But Clausia is completely unmoved by the tape. If anything, it amuses her, brings back positive memories of the man whose arm she found comfort in during her time in Revachal. With double confirmation that Clausia indeed wasn't sexually assaulted by Lely, Harry returns to Titus, and it's then that the leader of the Hardy Boys puts all his cards on the table. He reveals that they didn't kill Lely. He was dead when they found him, and in Clausia's room, no less. And with that, all signs point back to the mysterious woman on the rooftop. For the first time in the entire game, it seems like Harry has a true suspect. The tension is palpable as they go up to visit her again, and this time not for an interview, but for an interrogation. At this point, Harry unlocks a huge menu of questions to ask Clausia, starting with a series about her past. She's hinted at it during the first two conversations, but it's here that we can actually dive into it in earnest. In light of her lying ways, Clausia's true backstory is unclear, but she claims to be from Aranya, and won the Miss Teen Aranya beauty pageant thanks to a combination of her foreign appearance, her parents were immigrants, and her overall looks. This is a part of her past that one would think would be easy to look into, but conveniently for her, the contest has since been discontinued, eliminating that potential lead. 
Awarded with a scholarship from the pageant, she went on to study Iranian literature at a university and later found some success as an insurance saleswoman. This drew the attention of a banking firm who hired her for competitive intelligence. So, in other words, a polite term for corporate espionage. Again, with Clausia, it's hard to tell what's true and what's a fabrication. But between the fact that she scrambles the voices in Harry's head, something I'll be talking about down the line here, and the other information we have available to us, I think it's safe to say that she is indeed a spy of some sort. According to Clausia, the competitive intelligence gig led to some stability for her, but there was a human cost to her work. When she infiltrated businesses, people lost their jobs. Some people even committed suicide as a result of her actions, something that Clausia seems to regret deeply. One of the companies she went after was Loosecap, a conglomerate linked to the moral intern. When the job was finished, Clausia grew concerned that her employers might take her out to tie up loose ends, and decided to skip town. So she moved to Revishaw, took up residence at the Whirling and Rags, and dove headfirst into a life of debauchery that led her into the arms of Lely. All of this, the player can learn from conversing with her and pursuing every last sordid dialogue option in their interrogation. But the most important information she relays to the detectives is about the night of Lely's death. She tells Harry that while they were having sex, a bullet came through the window and struck him in the mouth. Convinced that her former employers had caught up with her at last, Clausia brought in Ruby and the Hardys to help her stage the hanging. As revelatory as all of that is, this information is made all the more complicated because of what the voices in Harry's head tell him at the end of this conversation. Up to this point, the player has probably put a reasonable level of trust in the voices in Harry's head. If we can get more information or insight with them from successful roles, why wouldn't we take their counsel to heart? But before Harry can make any further decisions, Volition reveals that all of them are compromised, that they have no idea if their input on Clausia is worth listening to, nor if she's even telling them the truth at all. She has them well and truly duped. She's impossible for them to read. This is such a brilliant merging of narrative and game design, as it clearly demonstrates that Clausia's skill at deception and social awareness is so advanced that nothing in your toolbox is going to be able to crack this unbreakable can. It hangs a cloud over the entire segment, casting doubt on everything she says, whether it's about her past or her connection with the deceased. And it makes the decision that follows even more complicated. With the interrogation over, Harry and Kim are faced with a rather difficult choice whether or not to arrest Clausia. They could either let her go, bring her in, or hand her a receipt for a station call, in which case she'll have to turn herself in on her own time. Ultimately, I think the decision comes down to how much you believe her story. As far-fetched as it might seem, there are a few things, like the bullet in Lely's head and the recently replaced window in her room, that do add up. But then again, at this point in the game, the idea that some dude completely unrelated to the strike shot Lely from the grassy knoll really does seem unbelievable. No matter what you decide, this is just about the end of your interactions with Clausia. If you decide to let her go, she'll flee the whirling before the tribunal, but not before leaving Harry a clue to help him trace the sniper shot. The same is true if you hand her the station call. If you do arrest her, however, Kim will take her back to the station, and later in the game, a shivers check will reveal that her employer did indeed catch up with her, as she'll be confronted in prison by a pair of agents from the moral intern. Obviously, in this case, she also won't help Harry trace down the shot from Lee Harvey Oswald, I mean, the deserter. In any case, because of all this, we'll have plenty to debate about with regards to Clausia in the years to come. What's the right decision here? I'm inclined to say that Harry should let her go. She does help him solve the case. But she lies about so much that even at the end of the game, you have to wonder how dangerous she might really be. I mean, her abilities sound a bit advanced for just a corporate spy, if you ask me. And her actions after Lely's death, as self-serving as they were, escalate the strike to a pretty dramatic extent. I'm not diving into a theory or anything like that here, simply suggesting that there are plenty of questions about Clausia that I think are fair to ask. But if Clausia is telling the truth, then I think you can make the argument that she is, especially in the ending where you choose to arrest her, a reinforcement 
of some of the game's core themes. Like so many other characters we meet in Revishaw, she's a worker screwed over by their corporate employers, by the man, if you will, and a reminder of the game's take on centrism, as portrayed here by the moral intern. In many other games, there's an attempt to make the middling option in any spectrum the most appropriate choice. But in Disco Elysium, the developers lampoon you for picking the brown, inoffensive pants just as much as it will if you become a fascist or a communist. We see that here with Klausia, as it's the moral intern, the supposedly rational centrists who hired her to commit espionage on their behalf, and now have every intention of killing her off to tie up loose ends. Overall, looking at Klausia, I'm amazed by the multitude of ways she shakes up the game. Whether it's informing Harry that he's a cop, telling him that she wasn't raped by Lely, admitting that it was her idea to stage the hanging, or the fact that she short-circuits the voices in Harry's head. At every turn, she's constantly taking what Harry thinks he knows about the investigation and pulling the rug out from under him. All of the best mystery media, whether it's a book, a TV show, a movie, or in this case, a video game, rely on this type of storytelling, on the detective protagonist, and by extension, the player, being consistently surprised and caught off guard by the twists and turns of the narrative. There are many ways that the developers accomplish this, but Klausia is far and away the prime example. And that's what makes Klausia so important to Disco Elysium. Thanks for watching. Huge shout out to my silver and gold tier channel members and Patreon subscribers James Pruitt, Raven Lampkin, Corey Matson, and Reed, who get early access to these videos thanks to donations of $5 to $10 a month. Big thanks to Isla Sound, who's allowed me to use her Disco Elysium fan music for these videos. Next time I cover Disco Elysium, we're going to talk about the inspiring message behind Lena and Morel, the cryptozoologists. Should be pretty appropriate for around Valentine's Day. See you guys next time.